agendas I am here to inspire, to challenge, and to encourage. I know some of you that are here this morning are very familiar with Lads of Leaders, and one of the things that I will do, I will not drill down on every single event because that's not my intent. My intent is to challenge you to be the children of God we need to be. And I need, you, I need to give you some perspective on Gail Nelson. And now, some of you probably heard the name and said, Gail is coming to speak. I don't know what some of you might have thought. Hopefully, I'm glad your, uh, your greatest fears have been dispelled. <laughs> That's why I make my voice deeper to make sure you know. I'm just, some of you might have heard Gail Sayers is coming to speak. I am not signing any footballs today either, for those of you that understand uh, the football history of Gail Sayers. Why am I passionate about Lads of Leaders? Brothers and sisters, here's the thing. My parents were divorced when I was two years old. And I, was, I grew up in inner city Toledo, Ohio. I could have made a whole lot of excuses for why I did not, or many excuses for not exceeding, not excelling, not seeking to just go the extra mile. My neighborhood was certainly not one of the best. But one of the things that was very clear, I had adults that mentored me. I was active in the Lord's church. Not having a father figure and not having my dad there, I had men who took the time to encourage me. And one of the things when we talk about lads and leaders today and as we talk, talk about strategy today more appropriately, it was uh, vividly my junior year in high school and the counselor's name was James Norris and he talked to me about a scholarship and my response was, no way. I can't go to college because I need to work to take care of my mom. And even to this day, and I've, said, I've shared this with countless audiences throughout the country, and it still puts a lump in my throat as I think about that particular day. That man said, Gail, apply for the scholarship. And there's a small company, you might have heard of them, Coca-Cola. He said, they're offering a four-year full-ride scholarship for someone who majors in business. And I was insistent. I said, no, I cannot do it. I need to work to take care of my mother. Needless to say, I applied for the scholarship. James, Mr. Norris was pretty persistent. And, and with that, and when I applied for the scholarship, I had to stand before a panel. And the panel uh, interviewed me and asked me one question. Who's the most important person to you? And you, when you're prepped for an interview, you're told to keep your composure. I started crying like a baby. At that point, I knew scholarship is lost. They'll give it to somebody else. They don't want some boo-hoo crying baby to represent Coca-Cola. Bottom line, I get home, walk in the door. My mom at the top of the stairs, her voice cracking, says, Gail? I said, yes, mom. You got the scholarship. So my point is, and so that Coca-Cola scholarship enabled me to do something beyond my wildest dreams, uh, which was at that time just going to college. Uh, and so Lads and Leaders is about preparing young people, preparing leaders. And serving on the National Board for Lads and Leaders, one of the things that it reminds me of, which, which will happen today in many areas throughout this country, and there may be a one or two football fans here today, I'm assuming, and I need to declare this for the record, I am unaffiliated. <laughs> <clears throat> Let me say that again, because I want you to hear me not only now, but when I get in that pulpit as well. I am unaffiliated. But strategy, what is, what is your strategy? And with the young people that are here today that are involved, with some parents that are here that are interested in Lads and Leaders, and maybe new families that may not know a lot about Lads and Leaders, one of the things that's very important is you need to have a game plan. And I want to commend the elders here and the leadership here uh, in working and getting some folks, you know, JJ and Nia, and working with your Lads and Leaders program. You need to have a game plan. Too many congregations fail to have a game plan. And as quiet as it's kept, too many congregations only focus on convention. If you only focus on convention, that's not a game plan. That's an episodic event that happens once a year. Yes, there's excitement, and I'm stealing my own thunder, but I'll get to it in a minute more specifically. That's not a game plan. And so when we think about lads and leaders and what it is that you're in essence doing, someone invested in my future. And that's what lads and leaders are doing for our children. I have four beautiful kids. The youngest started preaching when he was four years old. Now I say preaching, you know, a preacher would always say, well, my son was preaching. He started speaking publicly. Do you know what? He excels in school. <clears throat> when someone needs to stand up and do the, recite the Pledge of Allegiance, he gets mad when he's not called upon. There's a seed planted in that young man right now beyond the pulpit in life. 
And so as we think about lads and leaders, as I talk to you this morning in Bible class, I'm reminded of what the scriptures teach us in Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, when he is old, he will not depart from it. So as we think about lads and leaders today, and there was a Gospel Advocate article uh, some time ago that talked about who will fill their shoes. But now this is a great article, and it certainly speaks to perpetual leadership. It speaks to training children. But there's some folks who uh, think, and I will dispel a few myths about lads and leaders. Yes, we need elders, we need deacons, and they can't qualify without a wife. Amen. The bottom line is this. Uh, lads and leaders is certainly preparing future Bible school teachers, uh, future pre preachers, elders, deacons. But if you think that's the only thing that lads and leaders is doing, then you're selling the program short. Because the first myth that I want to dispel this morning is lads and leaders is just about training preachers. That is certainly not the case. When you think about lads and leaders, and I, give, I gave you the example of my eight-year-old son, Brandon, who's quite bold, who's quite the, uh, the, the bold one, <laughs> if you will. Lads and leaders produces leaders. Leaders in our schools, leaders in our communities, leaders at home. And I don't know if you need them in Alabama, but we need a few more leaders in Miami, in the state of Florida. We need some more kids who are willing to stand up and have the, have the comfort to stand in front of a group of total strangers and let folks know, whether it's in the school context, whether it's applying for a job, applying to college, preparing kids. And there's a preacher that's gonna speak here uh, in short order, and I looked at his notes, and he'll probably share with you not only his personal experience of our, as I've already done, but one of the things that's so important, I've had the opportunity, folks, to work with what some would call Miami or Florida's worst children. These kids came to me to a very special school, and you've heard of feeder patterns in schools, you know, where the elementary feeds into the middle, middle into the high school, or here is the feeder pattern. The feeder pattern was quite simply, you drop out of school or kicked out, get kicked out of school, then you go to juvenile detention or jail. Then you come to me. Can you imagine that welcome? Welcome to our school. But that was the feeder pattern. So, if you're t if, so when you think about it, and hopefully you hear the passion for training leaders, not just training preachers. If someone chooses to preach, God bless them. But the most important thing this morning that I want to impress upon you as you kick off your Lads and Leaders program is we need more leaders. I'll tell you more about those kids later on, but the point that I'm making to give you the context is God knows we need leaders. And when you think about training children to lead, you in essence build their family. Families are strengthened. When I think about my wife and we look at our kids, I look at the families that are involved in Lads and Leaders, I think about the young ladies, the young men, future husbands and wives. You are planting a seed to help these children take a, take a course that will lead them to greater success. And when you build families, you also build friendships. When you talk about kids that may not know each other and they come from various uh, neighborhoods, various communities, uh, lads and leaders are allowing these kids to be on the same team. And what's beautiful about the Lord's Church, regardless of race, regardless of socioeconomic status, we're part of one family, one spiritual family. And so let's just talk a little bit of strategy here. Uh, and let me dispel myth number two. A successful lads program at my congregation means we only attend convention because it's all about winning a trophy, right? Well, obviously our crown is in heaven. Our reward is in heaven, Robot Parkway. Uh, and I want to spend a little time here because I don't know how, ma how many year-round events you're involved in right now, and you don't need to answer that question. But one of the things, when I leave here, I will have not done my job if Roebuck Parkway is not involved in year-round events. Everywhere I go, on behalf of lads and leaders, I let people know, if you're not involved in year-round, you don't have a sustainable program. You have a convention-only program, and you're selling your children short. Because when you think about convention events, of course, convention, let's spend a little few moments there. And my sermon today is going to be raising the bar. That's what I'll preach in, in short order. But raise, convention does raise the bar, because you have to prepare. You go into a competitive environment and you need to bring your A game. Regardless of winning a trophy or not, you have done your best. That's what it's all about. 
And when you think about the congregation, what it does for our congregation as well, completing those projects, having a deadline. How many of you love deadlines? Okay, that's what I thought. <laughs> deadlines challenge us. We need to prepare. Uh, and so convention certainly has its value, and I'm not minimizing convention at all. But one of the things as we think about the 2015 convention, there are deadlines. Uh, there's an incredible theme uh, that we as a board came up with. One, if there was ever a time to focus on the unity in the Lord's church, to focus on the, the oneness in the Lord's church, the fact that Jesus only died for one church, it's now. When you think about the debate topic as well, uh, in terms of the rise, and I'm sure there's denominations in Alabama, so I've heard. There's certainly denominations in Florida as well. And our kids are growing up th being taught and being led to believe that just anything will do. But God never said that. God never authorized that. And so as we think about lads and leaders this morning uh, and the existence of you know, the debate topic, as you can see clearly on the screen, these are the type of relevant topics our kids need to have grounded, be taught. So as they grow up and as they, whether they preach or not, in school there's conversations. My, one of my sons, I'll just give you some anecdotal uh, stuff here. One of my sons actually uh, was at school, and when I think about leadership, and when I think about what Lads Leaders is doing for him and for all my kids, the kid was being bullied. And my son said, Dad, because uh, he, he knew the kids that were bullying the kid, pulled him aside and said, hey, it's not what you should do. Just the courage. It takes courage to stand up for what you believe in. He said, hey, you guys, you know, leave him alone. And so for the kids that are here, and even the adults as well, when you think about just the courage to stand up, to address, I mean, if somebody were to ask you at school, why are there so many churches? To have the relevant background, to have the information provided through your local congregation, to study that, to have your friends, your peer group, because we all are human, we're social creatures. We want to be able to uh, have someone talk to us and uh, side with us. But we're on, the, we're on God's side. And when we think about lads and leaders and what, we, what you're doing here at Roebuck Parkway, recognize, yes, you are among 250,000 participants that we had in lads and leaders last year. And one of the things, just like a football team, and I won't disclose my favorite football team because some of you would, cut, would shut me off right now. But here's the thing. To be a part of something that's powerful, to be a part of the winning team. And I've had the pleasure of just meeting a lot of professional athletes and uh, doing business with some professional athletes. And one of the things about winning and being victorious, it certainly is a team effort. It's not a one man or one woman job. So as part of the lads and leaders, when you think about the, the scope, the depth of what was taking place nationwide, yes, you got 250,000 plus participants. And yes, trophies are a part of it. Rec being rewarded for your efforts is a part of the Lads and Leaders program. But one of the things that's very important, and as you go through and decide what events you will be a part of, uh, you, all that information, certainly within the event guidebook, is available for you. But what I want to focus on now is what's the value of year-round? Why should Roebuck Parkway be so in involved in year-round events? Well, as we think about it, there's 37 events for Lads and Leaders. The lion's share are things you can do right here at home. The lion's share of the events, 24 plus, are events that can take place right at home. Let me give you an example. Every time I preach back home, I have a group of young boys that speak for me, year-round Bible reading. On Friday at convention, those young men walk across that stage. They don't compete against anybody. It's what they do right at home. When I think about our young people, that, our youth group that goes over to uh, the, a nursing home not far from the Miami Gardens Church location. Those young people uh, go in and they, the young men lead songs and uh, they go and sit down with some of the residents. Good Samaritan. And I'll touch on that later on as well. You don't have to create anything new in order to be, participate in a year-round program, which is another myth uh, of lads and leaders. What can, you do, what can it do for your congregation, year-round events? And one of the things I want to impress upon you is, you know, getting involved, not just, the, not just the children, but the adults as well. Year-round, it builds your local congregation, sustains it. Year-round programming for lads and leaders also allows you to not only train the children here, but you, it gives you a chance to get feedback from these kids as well. Next week, September 13th, uh, we're having a Ladies' Day program. Some of our young ladies will speak. 
Some of our young ladies will year-round songs of praise. So we did not, we don't have to create anything new to give those young folks the opportunity to participate in youth and adult church projects. So let me just pause for a minute. Year-round activities, what you do here at home, helps train your children in such a way where they are getting rewarded for what they do at home. That's sustainability, folks. When you think about the business concept of sustainability, if it's only convention, rah, rah, have a great time, make a lot of noise, have fun. But right here at home, the opportunity is there. There's four categories, Bible, service, leadership, curriculum. And I'll give you some examples of some things you can do here at home. But most importantly, I guarantee you, there's things that I certainly don't know that you're doing here that would fit very nicely, seamlessly, into the year-round uh, uh, context, if you will. Paul said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now, if I tell my eight-year-old son that if you do that, you'll get a cookie, the likelihood of him doing it again is very high. What gets rewarded gets repeated. And so one of the things that for the young people that are here, whether you admit it or not, it feels good to just get a pat on the back. Now, we understand that ultimately we're here to serve. It's not about us. But I'm here to tell you, there are adults that I've talked to, grown men and women, who when asked to stand and speak publicly in whatever the context, are apprehensive. Had a young man of, I was in inner city Miami, Brownsville Church of Christ. They had never heard of the Lads of Leaders program. I was there two weeks ago. You know what one of the gentlemen told me? He said, where was this 30 years ago? Where was this 30 years ago? Because to this day, I struggle speaking in front of a group. I needed this growing up. I needed the confidence. And so when we think about our children, uh, please, uh, when you commend them, when you reward them for what they're doing here at home, the likelihood of it happening again is there. In every congregation that I visit, there's probably a young man or two, and there may be some folks who really need to hear this that aren't here. That's a sad commentary sometimes as well. But when we think about uh, encouragement, keep it up. We can't, again, remember my context. I've seen too many kids, the nine-year-old boy, first name Raymond, who was in a gang because he was mentored, but he was mentored the wrong way. The little boy, Brian, who when put into a classroom and got a 4.0 GPA, was yet in a gang. So it's not the lack of potential these kids have. And, then, and again, when I use these vivid examples, it's not to scare you in any way. I've just seen the other side. I've seen what can happen if we fail to uh, invest in our children, fail to commend them for their efforts. And so when you think about investing in our children, we can't afford not to invest. The cost of not investing is far too high. I've already quoted Proverbs 22 and 6. We got to train them to be just leaders, to be just leaders. The new Lads of Leaders logo is just that, just the L, training godly leaders. For those of you that work, how valuable is an employee that just has a good work ethic? How valuable is an employee who just, when they, that are, that's honest and just does what they need to do. And so as you think about from a business standpoint, let's look at the numbers. The numbers just don't lie. You probably, you, I don't know if you've seen this metric before, this comparison. We did a study uh, at the board level in terms of the numbers of the youth that are faithful in the Lord's church. Kids that are involved that attend church only, 35% faithful. We've lost too many. Unacceptable. When I get on that Delta flight later on this evening, if the pilot comes on and says, welcome to Delta Flight 1602, I'm 35% successful, sit back, relax, and enjoy your flight. <laughs> I'm getting off. Calling Skip saying, you know what, it take, you drive half the way to Miami, I'll drive the other half, and I'll call my wife. <laughs> Bottom line. 35% successful is just, it's not acceptable. But now kids that are involved in just other programs, that participate in other programs in the church. And there's a lot of value to various programs. 54% faithful, still unacceptable. And certainly it's not 
but kids that are involved in LADS are leaders. And for, these, for those of you that may be new families, and you've heard about LADS, you know Roebuck Parkway's been involved in LADS leaders before, please understand, not only from a convention standpoint, for year-round events, 85% faithful. We're getting closer, but we're not there yet. From a business standpoint, yes, there may be trophies raised. From a business standpoint, uh, you may never win a trophy, and that's okay. But the fact that you're able to stand up, speak on behalf of the Almighty God, not be afraid, not be ashamed, will last a lifetime. Fund development, one of the things that I've, I have the pleasure of doing uh, in Miami is helping various uh, youth groups uh, in the charitable context, big brothers, big sisters for one, help them uh, in terms of fund development, raising money to help children. And so there's a term called ROI, return on investment. And ultimately, we want to produce. That's somebody's, those are some husband, future husband. Can't you tell, especially the one in the middle. That's a future husband. He's ready to go. Saturday morning, you, you know the drill. Saturday morning, getting up, being ready to go. It's game day. Across this country, when these football players are suiting up, ready to go and attack the, and get on the field. That's what we want these kids to be, for life, ready to go. So myth number three, do we have to create anything new? And I've already answered this question. To participate in year-round programming, and I've looked at the uh, history. I talked with Roy, Roy Johnson, executive director. I said, how much has Roebuck Parkway done in terms of year-round events? The answer was, well, not much. And I'm not saying that to make you feel badly. That's just the truth. It's time. It's time. You don't have to create any new programs. I told you I'm a little shy, and you probably can tell. <laughs> but I need to tell you the truth. It's time. There's young people sitting here, young ladies sitting here, that can do some things right here at home in the proper context, of course. Young men sitting here that can do a lot of things that are already doing some things. Your mission work, your vacation Bible school. Tie it in. You don't have to create any, anything new necessarily to participate in the year-round programming. I mentioned Good Samaritan back at home. These leaves change colors and they fall down. Somebody needs to rake them up. You're welcome, children. <laughs> year-round puppets, one of the things that our young people are beginning to do now at that same nursing home I talked to you about is to get involved and take a puppet show over there just make, and see those residents smile. The owner of the nursing home uh, called me. She just happens to be uh, one of my neighbors. And she said, one of the participants, she's not a Christian. And get this, young people, here's your impact. Not a Christian. And she said to uh, the owner, and she told, I, I got to get back. I told my daughter to drop me off early because the kids are coming by today. The kids are coming by today. So those young people that are going over to that nursing home and just giving them a ray of hope, one day she may be a child of God. Things that are here at home, your, your bulletin boards, getting kids involved, the PowerPoint presentations, uh, things that's ideas for you to think about, implement right here at home and from a year-round standpoint. Uh, many times uh, these young men and even young ladies, and the, as I mentioned, the Ladies' Day that we have on September 13th, getting them involved uh, in terms of year-round speech, year-round songs of praise. There's so many opportunities uh, for the congregation to get involved. One of our young ladies, in particular her, going and speaking at the Ladies' Day that's coming up as well. Let me just stop for just a second and just ask you to think about somebody that told you that you could make it. It was Mr. Norris for me, the school counselor. Unfortunately, it wasn't my dad. But when you see young people together, like what you see on the screen, encouraging one another, that seed's got to be planted somewhere. Somebody told you for every adult that's here this morning that you could make it. Some adult, someone, maybe a family member, it might have been your mom or dad, said you can do better. Mediocrity is not acceptable. And that's what Lads of Leaders is doing. I don't need to sell you on the program, you're already involved. I want you to take it to the next level. The time to take it to the next level is right now. Leadership calls for us to work in the various areas, and Lads of Leaders provides that. Whether it's speech, song leading, songs of praise, teach to teach, training future teachers, keepers, uh, helping these young ladies and young men, uh, respectively, understand, providing for a household, 
life skills, not just what you do at the local congregation. I'll go through a few slides here in terms of art and photography and scrapbook and things that many of the congregations are involved in nationwide. Whatever your artistic ability, whatever your creativity, uh, there's an opportunity for you to get involved. It never gets old seeing young people stand up and speak on behalf of the Lord. Seeing those young men prepared on a Saturday morning. It took preparation at home for the come to the realization at the convention, but also at so many at young people at various ages, starting so young, so innocent. Let's, let's not allow these kids to grow up and to become just complacent. And so as adults, the challenge is this. Are we prepared to go to the next level? Are we prepared? Is Roebuck Parkway prepared uh, to help these kids not only participate in the convention events, but also the year-round events as well? Whether it be speech, song leading, songs of praise, Bible Bowl, Bartimaeus. But ultimately, we're just one church. Isn't that beautiful? One church. All across this country, not just on that single convention weekend, but as we prepare at home, our future leaders, our future husbands, our future wives, we're planting those seeds right now. Because as quiet as it's kept, folks, the family is under attack. This man and woman, something as simple as what God created, is under attack. Marriage under attack. Our kids need to have the moral fiber, the spiritual fiber to stand and say no. And I say no not because it's my opinion. I say no because it's not written here. Period. The Church of Christ has to stand on sound doctrine. This Lads and Leaders kickoff that you're engaged in today, I want to reinforce what probably has already been said, what's been talked about locally. But I didn't come all the way from Miami just to share with you to say, hey, keep up the good work. I'm saying, hey, folks, it's time. Many a football coach today will have those guys that have trained. They've gone to training camp. They've done all the hard work. But now it's time to put it to use. Roebuck Parkway, the time is now. When those kids walk into that opening ceremony, and whether it's Atlanta or Orlando, wherever you go, so I, so I put Orlando in there as well as an option, just an option, just an option. Don't relax. relax. Atlanta's not far either. But when you think about uh, the opportunity, the confidence of those young people walking in there, just like those teams run on that field, they have the confidence to know that I've prepared. Somebody here, your, the event coordinators, took the time, spent the time, and got me ready. So in the various locations throughout the country, as we think about Lad to Leaders, what it's doing for our nation, what it's doing for our homes, what it's doing for everyone here, ultimately, Ultimately, the challenge is this. And last year, when everybody gathered for worship service to culminate the weekend, convention was over, and that one family could worship together. When I talk to children, when I talk to adults, when I talk to youth professionals, one of the things I share with them is, what is the ultimate goal for our kids? Commitment, a willingness to work, a servant mentality, letting folks know that at the end of the day, what can I do to help? And young people, please recognize that saying yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, see, that's kind of gone away in Miami a little bit. It may, hopefully it's still in Alabama, kids saying yes, sir, and yes, ma'am, all the time. That's a beautiful thing. That's a life skill. And when kids come up to me, and I had one young man, I was with, the, with my family in a restaurant, and it happened to be one of the boys that came to that school that I used to run. He was with his friends. He could have easily ignored me to be cool. He tapped his friend and said, see that guy over there? He saved my life. I'm sitting there with my wife and my kids. And to have a, he was probably in his 20s by now. He said, that man over there saved my life. I stole, I hung out. He saved my life. So for me to see my kids hear him say that, folks, the only thing, I mean, that's victory. To make an imprint in a child's life, to challenge him to do the, their level best, 
Yeah, there's people will score a few touchdowns today here and there. But the true victory is through Jesus Christ. To have a program, a sustainable program, that plants a seed here at Roebuck Parkway. The child that may never win that award, who goes on and becomes a productive citizen, who goes on to be a faithful husband, a faithful wife, a faithful member in the Lord's Church. Trace it back. I can trace it back to a, a number of children that sat at Miami Gardens, those that got involved. Our current song leader, when he was a young man, was in Lads of Leaders. That wife, she was in Lads of Leaders and still holding to the book. Trace it back. I had a young man tell me today, I won't call his name because you already know him, he's 81 years old, and he talked about his grandkids and his great-grandkids that are in Lads of Leaders. And he's got a southern accent as well from Louisiana. <laughs> My point is, it works. And so in closing, I want to challenge everybody. When you think about your program, year-round, getting everybody involved and making sure that you think beyond not only convention, but you think beyond even the church, what this will do for children for the rest of their lives. If there's any questions, I'll be more than happy to, I don't know, we got a little bit of time, maybe five minutes, after, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to answer any. Any questions? Are you ready for the kickoff? I'm not talking about the game today. <laughs> I'm talking about this really, literally. And I'm just curious if any of the elders are here. How many year-round programs have you all done at present? Just curious. You can. Four or five different ones. Okay. And just a couple of tips. One of the things that we're doing in, in Miami Gardens, and uh, everybody's studying Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians. We've had a few uh, kids graduate. We may not have our regular Bible Bowl team this year, but the entire congregation, Sundays and Wednesdays, are studying those four books because those are the Bible Bowl books at convention. But again, using that as the guide, Sundays and Wednesdays, and now if you go to Miami Gardens, you, it's not unusual to hear someone say, hey, what's Galatians 327 state? And now you got grandma and the grandchild involved. So a seamless opportunity. That's one tip uh, that I would share with you as well. I don't know if that's something, something to think about. So now everyone will take the Bible Bowl test. We may not have a Bible Bowl team, but that was an option. And it got the entire congregation involved. Now folks are walking around. Uh, we're, we're testing folks on a weekly basis uh, as well. And that was something new for us, something we had to learn, because it was only the kids getting involved, a handful of people getting involved. You know what that led to? Burnout. People got tired, doing the right thing, but they just got tired. So now it became a congregational effort. Any other, any questions? I answered every single question you might have had. Young person, any question for me? I'm trying to overcome my shyness, so please work with me now. Again, if there's no questions, I'll certainly be around, but I just want to just thank you for the opportunity I could talk about this program ad nauseum because it works. I've seen both sides. I've seen kids transform their lives. So young people, I commend you for just getting involved uh, and for staying involved. And for the coordinators, I'll say this later on as well. You guys are awesome. Now's the time for the, if you're between 20 and 50, you need to be a coordinator. If you're 51, we'll count you as well. But that really, you need to be a coordinator. Young families, get involved. There's something for everybody. So we're going to close in prayer as we prepare to transition. But the most important thing is uh, we're going to score. The labor's not in vain in the Lord. And your Lads Leaders program will go to another level. Because I'll come and check back. I'll call, drive, I'll whatever I need to do. But no, I'm watching. I want to help you uh, take your program to the next level. So let us pray together. Gracious God, our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all your rich and wonderful blessings. We thank you for the opportunity this day to just encourage, to challenge, but just to remind each of us how important it is for us to invest in our children,
to invest in our families, to produce godly leaders. We understand, dear God, the, of what's taking place in, in the country in which we live, and we just pray that we will have the, the vision to just do those things that will not only prepare but train our young people to stand and fight the good fight of faith. Be with those that are here that are already involved. We pray that uh, if there's any young person here or a family that still hesitant in terms of getting involved, we pray that, we can, that something was said today that will encourage them to step out on faith and watch the results. Be with us now as we close this class and thank you for the opportunity yet again to share, to encourage, and inspire. In Jesus' name.